So let's just talk about how digital distribution has, has changed all that. Hey guys, um, so I loved hearing that because that world about traditional finance is a world that I don't know whether it's fortunately or unfortunately, but um, I'm going to go with fortunately. We don't um, necessarily have to get involved in. So uh, what we do is distribute uh, content across all media. And when we first started in 08, that was a really simple solution. We were dealing with finished films, and then we could just go out. What we're seeing now, and I think it's great, Lydia, that you thought of this, is that a lot of the digital platforms, like we all know Netflix is funding original content. OK, great. So that's like you could, as a producer, a few years ago, have gone to knock at the traditional TV channels. You could go, OK, I've talked to Showtime. I've talked to HBO. Now there's a couple more doors to knock on. You could knock at Netflix. You could knock on Amazon. You could knock at Hulu. So if you've got a project that's purely on paper and you're looking for financing, digital right now in that world means there's more doors to knock on. So that's great. And that's a pretty like simple aspect of what digital can mean for financing. There's two more scenarios, if I can, Please. that are a little bit more um, nuanced that we spend quite a bit of time in. So one of those is where a producer has come along. Typically, we're dealing with budgets that are a bit smaller, so maybe half a million, a million, million and a half. And usually, most of those projects are completely equity financed by a group of investors. So there hasn't been a ton of complicated senior debt and and tax incentives and all that. Um, so coming along, and there's a scenario where that film is completely finished. Um, and I'm sure folks saw at Sundance this year, Netflix, and we're going to see more Amazon doing it, are buying those films before any other distributor gets involved. So is that called financing? Well, no, because the film's completely finished before they picked it up. But in a lot of those cases, or in some of those cases, there's visibility to them of that project before they're picking it up. So there may be a conversation happening. There may be something going along where there's a little bit of like, OK, I think this is going to happen. But still, that's the other extreme. So one extreme is the ideas on the paper. You go knock on the doors, they 100% finance. The other one is you've completely managed to finance, and they're going to come in right at the end and buy all the rights. The middle ground is pretty interesting. So what happens if you're partially financed, and you think, hey, this could be a project that one of these guys might be interested in. I need a bit more funding. Great. So you have some investor money, or you have something from a sales agent or whatever, and you're like, OK, I can take that money, but I need something to unleash that final pocket of money. Like, I need an extra incentive to get these people to give me like that extra quarter million dollars. What can I use to unleash that little bit? oh, wait, I could use the fact that maybe Netflix is interested, or maybe Amazon is interested, or maybe we think that uh, full screen is interested, or Hulu. And we can use that interest there to say, OK, these guys, we think they're going to pay this amount of money. And it's like, instead of a bank, but you're using it in the same way, you're like, I think I'm going to license it here. But then you can use that to unlock the money here. That's something we're increasingly seeing. And it could be because we're operating at these smaller budget levels where, like, a quarter million, half a million to come in at that, at that point is really helpful. But it's very, very interesting. The thing that we as a distributor, um, and then I'll shut up. No, no. Um, <laughs> end up, end up um, really ad advising folks on is, OK, that's great, but be careful. right? Because what happens if, if you're going to bring in one of those guys? Well, the big question is, what rights are you giving up in return? Because that's just not maybe the sales agent's going to sell that territory, or maybe they're going to hit the estimates. It's definitely going to be on Netflix in however many countries. And the question is, what rights is it going to be? Is it going to be they want the first window? Is it going to be the second window? Are you going to be allowed to do anything else? Is it going to be the world? What set of territories? And then it's <coughs> like, OK, well, that's going to come in. That money coming in is going to then say, well, how much does that impact the total revenue story, because how many rights am I then going to have left and to, to monetize elsewhere? And that's a lot of what we'll do. So we'll figure out, OK, if this is going to come in here, how much is that going to cannibalize other rights? And then how can we go and make sure revenue is maximized elsewhere? So the point of all of that long story is that with digital coming in, it's, more, it's kind of more nuanced. Like, is that financing, or is it distribution, or is it a bit of both? And the thing I would say to producers and, um, is just be careful about the rights and really understand um, if you're working with a partner, any of those guys, or, and many more that are coming on, Vice, Fullscreen, Condé Nast, all these folks, 
These are all potential financing partners, platform partners. Just be careful you understand what rights you're giving up for that financing and have a clear picture of then what rights you're going to have to exploit.